all in all, we have listened to the primary surgical treatment of uh, ovarian cancer and interval debulking operations. My task is to talk about medication treatment or for ovarian cancer. So we are not going to talk about early stages. We are talking about advanced disease. We have to talk about a standardized regimen of a treatment of ovarian cancer. Much has been said about the fact that it's a heterogeneous pathology. Depending on the histology of the tumor, of the genetic of the tumor, of the biological, molecular biology of the tumor. Now we can customize the treatment only basing on the BRCA mutation and a low-grade serous cancer. Of course, 80 percent, it's a high-grade serous ovarian cancer. Uh, the treatment is chemotherapy with a platinum toxin. You can see the main combinations uh, that are registered now and recommended throughout the world, the level of evidence base. It's a platinum toxin therapy with the use uh, addition of bevacizumab in the USA. It's a hyper chemotherapy after interval site reduction reductive operation. As to the low grade tumors, Anna has already mentioned uh, that low grade serous tumors uh, they uh, have their molecular genetic specificities. Uh, they poorly respond to chemotherapy, and uh, the only work clinical study uh, it's a uh, 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 Hershenson uh, paper. The use of hormonal therapy. The patients uh, from two and four stage. Uh, the first group, uh, uh, the first group was followed up, and the second group under the uh, hormone therapy, maintenance therapy uh, by hormones demonstrated better results as to the overall survival and uh, disease-free survival. Uh, regardless uh, the uh, the receptor status. The only option that we have now, and it's included in the, the standard of treatment, it's a BRCA mutations. In early trials, it was shown that throughout the world, the percentage of uh, BRCA mutations, germinal and somatic, it's uh, Thirty-five percent in Russia. There are other impairment in the system of recombination. Apart from the hereditary mutations, the system impairment of. Uh, the patient with their impairment of recombination, HRD test. When today we make decision as to the primary treatment of ovarian cancer, much has been taken into account. First of all, we shall make a decision what shall we start with, neoadjuvant chemotherapy or primary debulking surgery. The second decision that is to be made is to chemotherapy. We have seen that uh, despite the fact that chemotherapy 
Kaba platin, paclitaxel, it's a conventional standardized therapy. There may be the variations. We shall decide on the regimen, correct regimen. And the third decision is uh, the addition of bevacizumab. Shall we add or not to add? Of course, it's preferable to know at the level of operation in chemotherapy the status. The as to the chemotherapy, it's a long trial, old trial, all the emphasis now has been made on target therapy, definition of some molecular genetic disturbances. We have the similar trials as uh, the same old trials as to chemotherapy. Uh, Cog1 uh, 72 showed that intraperitoneal chemotherapy turned out to be, to be effective. Later, uh, one analyzing patients with uh, BRCA1 mutation. It was shown that patients who, who didn't have this kind of mutation, they had the better long-term results. More, it may be related, uh, on the other hand, with a high dose of uh, cystoplatin. There is a meta-analysis as to the use of intraperitoneal chemotherapy, where all the data were analyzed, and it turned out that this uh, standardized dose for those for intraperitoneal introduction turned out to be not effective. Then the Japanese population met to see a trial a weekly introduction of carboplatin and they demonstrated the better results of the treatment. Later, the trial was conducted ICON-8 to compare all the regimens uh, in uh, the regimen once in three weeks. It turned out that survival, disease-free survival and overall survival, uh, they turned out to be similar. Three-week regimen showed the effectiveness. The similar trial, uh, in the similar tribe uh, group analysis was made and it was showed uh, that in case of interval debulking, uh, the figures uh, of survival uh, were low comparing to primary debulking surgery. But uh, a weekly dose dense modes are not better uh, the conventional three weeks regimen, regardless of the type of site reduction. Uh, the questions uh, to Bevacizumab. Two trials uh, were conducted. We know them. Uh, these trials demonstrated uh, that Bevacizumab increases uh, the long-term survival only in high group, in high risk group. The stage three and GOG 218 patients with the four stage of the disease. Well, their paper was published. The goal of this paper, the work, 
The effectiveness of maintenance therapy of bevacizumab. Bevacizumab, 15 months, were compared with bevacizumab, 30 months. It turned out uh, that bevacizumab, 30 months, didn't improve the long-term results. 15 months are sufficient for maintenance therapy. I'd like to talk about neoadjuvant uh, therapy with the use of bevacizumab. This regimen is quite frequently used. Uh, the trial was conducted NOVA. Preoperatively, bevacizumab was used together with the chemotherapy, comparing to chemotherapy alone. Then after after interval cytoreduction, reduction, bevacizumab was introduced standardizedly in both arms. Bevacizumab didn't improve uh, their uh, long-term result. High pack. High pack, the third phase, from the Netherlands, a sufficient amount of patients. High pack was used after interval site reduction, a severe group of patients. It's a positive. Positive trial, uh, better results with the use of high pack in case of interval cyta reduction. But there are discussions. Next question. Uh, when we select uh, the therapy, maintenance regimen, either of patients without bevacizumab. Uh, use or not to use PARP inhibitors, or patients who receive bevacizumab, or whether to uh, maintain bevacizumab or to use uh, PARP inhibitors. Uh, different trials were conducted as to the PARP inhibitors. Patients who received bevacizumab, it's a Paola trial and sober, solo, patients who received bevacizumab. What shall we do? Paola trial, the, the goal was patients with the third and fourth degree grade after cytoreductive operation, after chemotherapy with platinum, whether to include bevacizumab or not. All groups of patients were included, enrolled. It turned out that we have the increase in the survival, disease-free survival by 5.5 months. Then, depending on the mutation status, patients with their BRCA mutation and without terminal BR. RCA mutation. It turned out uh, that a dual combination uh, was better. Effectiveness of treatment turned out to be higher. Better disease free survival rate by 16 months. HRD test, it's impairment on homological recombination in groups of, in patients with, uh, with, they have the advantage by 15 months, disease-free survival, but HRD negative patients, they didn't show these results. Today, in all the clinical trials, survival with uh, the second uh, relapse survival is studied. 
we see that patients with the HRD positive status, uh, they have uh, their 20 month longer disease free survival rate. In patients without uh, BRCA and patients with uh, BR, terminal BRCA, and uh, while dividing patients in high and low risk groups, in low risk group, the delta is higher. We see the advantages if we add alaparib to bevacizumab. Uh, with the patients with HRD positive. PARP inhibitors is a maintenance therapy. It's a question. Patients uh, who didn't receive bevacizumab and SOLA1 and PAOLA1. SOLA1 uh, was devoted to patients with the BRCA mutation, three and fourth uh, grade of the disease. For two years, uh, they shall receive uh, their maintenance therapy of alaparib. It's shown uh, two times higher and longer disease-free survival rate. More than five years without progression, 50% of patients live. Of course, uh, if in case of full response, uh, we had 52 percent, five-year uh, disease-free survival rate. And the type, time of operation and volume of operation, of course, the results turned out to be better in case of primary site reduction, but in the group of all Parib, the results uh, uh, were even better in case of interval site reduction. The similar situation is as to the, the extension of operation without residual tumor. Uh, what kind of treatment shall we select for our patients? If we have BRCA mutation, uh, we can uh, use Olaparib. Uh, yes, if a patient uh, receives Bevacizumab uh, with HRD negative, we preserve Bevacizumab. But if uh, BRCA plus uh, HRD plus Olaparib and HR plus BRCA negative A, Bevacizumab plus Olaparib. These are the options of treatment. And in this group, we see in Bevacizumab plus Olaparib in BRCA plus and HRD plus group. Thank you, dear colleagues.